Time is a blessing when it's spent in good company. It makes journeys seem shorter, days go quicker, nights end too soon. But when that journey is over, after the joy and memories, sometimes there is no going back. The Hurricane, with us since 2014, is very nearly at the end of its road. Lamborghini's smallest challenger can no longer survive in this world we've created. But before we say goodbye, we have a chance to say hello to the STO, the last of its kind, a hurricane that holds aloft a giant middle finger salute to the world it leaves behind. Here we go. Okay, 80, 90, 110, 120, that's 140, 150, 160, 170. This is the Super Trofeo Omologato. It takes its inspiration from Lamborghini's One Make Super Trofeo racing series, delivering track performance in a car that's been homologated for the road. It's a race car with number plates, and that means it's raw. The normal Hurricanes, the rear wheel drive, the Performante, the Evo, they're not exactly soft, but compared to this, I mean, this is a completely different animal. The suspension is hard, the seats are hard, the sound, there's no other word for it, it's hard. It's so raw in here. Even when you're not pushing, it's loud, but when you do push... <laughs> and that Agrapovich exhaust wakes up, you wake up. In fact, anyone within a hundred mile range is waking up. Listen. Absolutely mega. But, as sweet as it sounds, all that extra racket doesn't come with any extra performance. The engine hasn't changed. Its 192 mile an hour top speed is lower than the Performante's 201, and its 0 to 62 time is 3 seconds versus the Performante's 2.9. And those numbers are a wake up call. They're a reminder that the Hurricane is at the peak of its powers. There's not much more for that V10 to give, but while Lamborghini can't work the V10 any harder, they can work smarter. One of the things they've done is to be very clever about weight saving. The STO weighs 1,339 kilograms, 40 kilograms less than the Performante. They've achieved this by using rear wheel drive only, magnesium wheels, thinner glass, and plenty of carbon fiber. One of the problems with the standard Hurricane was that it was quite a fussy, complicated design, particularly at the front. It had fenders, bonnets, more fenders, and a front bumper. But Lamborghini have replaced all of that and all the bolts and the nuts that hold them together with a single carbon fiber clamshell, which you open using a special 3D printed key. You pop it in here, press this button, run around here, push the other button, and then up it goes, all in one unit. This isn't called a clamshell, by the way. It's called a cofango, which is a portmanteau of two Italian words, cofano, meaning bonnet, and parafango, meaning fender. Under there, you've got a little bit of room for a tire repair kit or a helmet, but actually not even enough room for a helmet because whoever designed this, well, they didn't design it big enough to accommodate a helmet unless you remove the polystyrene. Then your helmet will just about fit in and then you can use this as a 
a sick box for your passenger. Speaking of feeling sick, you might feel a bit sick when you realise there's even more polystyrene hidden away in nooks and crannies of this car where you might expect some slightly better material. The rest of it is just mad and brilliant though, isn't it? This colour is not called grey, it's called Grigio Titans and it costs £11,250 plus VAT. The stickers all over the SDO, guess how much they cost? £4,000 plus VAT. It's even got a roof scoop, although that's not there to channel extra air into the engine. The engine makes the same power as the Performante. That is just there to look cool. It's even got a shark's fin, a fin for goodness sake. And according to Lamborghini, that's there to help this car's dynamic ability. But if that's true, then why isn't the shark's fin on the Aventador? Why isn't every single supercar using a similar design? I don't buy it. What I do buy is this massive rear wing. It's fixed, but you can adjust it to three different settings using an Allen key. Not only is it enormous, but it provides enormous amounts of downforce, up to 450 kilograms, which, if you don't understand metric, is about one Highland cow. <laughs> Right, so how does it drive? It might have a lot of gimmicky, gorgeous, but gimmicky stuff on the outside, but honestly, there is no faulting the way this hurricane hustles itself down the road. The steering is a personal highlight of mine. It's so responsive, so fast. Quarter turn, and you're in another lane. Half a turn, and you're in a tree. It's also got rear wheel steering, which makes it sharper still. Honestly, it cannot miss an apex. It's like a laser-guided missile. It's not perfect. The steering is a little bit light, a little bit over-assisted, and there's not an awful lot of feel to it. I do prefer the steering on a 911 GT3. In fact, the first time you pile into a corner in the STO, you start to wonder where and when that front outside corner will grip. But then it settles in nicely, the chassis loads up. Understeer, complete myth. It will oversteer on you, but it's progressive. It communicates with you and you feel very much oh, a part of the chassis. The gearbox is a seven speed DCT with super short ratios. You reach that eight and a half thousand RPM red line astonishingly quick, which means that you're constantly changing up and down the box. And it makes you feel so involved with the experience. You have to be on your toes at all times. There are so many supercars out there that have such long gearing, which means that you could be doing 120 miles an hour by the time you're at the top of second gear, but in this, nah, you constantly shift. <laughs> and it's so rewarding as a result. The brakes, let's see what happens. Yep, absolutely astonishing. Carbon ceramics. Apparently, they'll go from 100 kph to zero in three seconds, so they're exactly as good as this car's acceleration. As for the driving modes, well, you get a choice of three. There's STO, which is the softest setting. It's not soft at all. Then there's Trofeo, which is the race setting. Super hard, basically unusable on the public road, and it also slackens off the ESP. It just makes everything so firm. In fact, driving in that mode is a bit of a challenge because if anything, the throttle response is too responsive. That, combined with the fact the car is so hard, makes it a bit difficult to modulate the throttle exactly as you need it. But I'll tell you what, it's a good challenge. The third mode, Piaggia, is used in the wet only. Although there's so much traction with these standard Bridgestone Presenter Sport tyres that you'll probably only ever need that mode when using the optional racing semi-slicks. Whichever mode you're in, the STO just feels serious. So serious, there's even a fire extinguisher behind the driver and a telemetry system with cameras for recording your lap times. It's a genuine track day weapon with a side hustle in B-roads. I do have questions though. Is it really worth spending £300,000 on an STO? Why not just buy my favourite Hurricane, the rear wheel drive, and save a shed load of cash? Also, how much is this car really giving? And how much does it have left to give? 
The answer to the first question surely depends on whether you have the cash. As for the second, the STO is undeniably brilliant, but it's also becoming apparent that in order to keep up with supercars with yet more power, bigger changes are needed. This engine, this chassis, this package has reached its peak, and as sad as we are to admit this, it's now approaching the end of its epic journey. We all knew this day would come. The question is, do we mourn? Do we rebel against a future where cars like the Hurricane have no place? Or do we celebrate the fact that we were around, we were alive and in the presence of machinery as amazing as this? For me, the glass is half full. I feel blessed to have witnessed and experienced the Hurricane up close. Like the old saying goes, better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. This chapter might be ending, but with Lamborghini, I'm sure the legacy will never die.